There's only one road through this, and both ends of it lead nowhere. I mean, how hard can it be for a graduated police officer to guard a goddamn transport yard with a fence around it? Sorry, Captain. A backhoe. A three-ton yellow backhoe. But listen, Chief. Last night, I never took my eyes off that transport yard fence, except for that one alarm. It has to be a conspiracy. A conspiracy? Like a grassy knoll theory. I'm supposed to send somebody way out in the boonies to chase down a pot thief. The only smart cop I got on this whole reservation is Joe Leaphorn, and he's on a goddamn leave. Yeah, put me through to Dispatcher Allison. Oh. Hey, this must be your conspiracy theory. Old Lady George was drunk at 7-Eleven and threw a bag of potato chips and was restrained and escorted out. I was wondering, see, if Old Lady George was pretending to be drunk and she threw those potato chips on purpose as a distraction, then who's ever stealing from the motor pool must be familiar In with... In your life, have you ever seen Old Lady George sober? No, but... This is Dispatcher Allison. Allison, this is Largo. Thanks a lot for the hot potato. But we're tied up with a grand larceny situation up here, and if they want us to be chasing after pot poachers from Chaco, they'll have to order up and pay for a helicopter. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. You'll never get it authorized. Well, then you better get out there and find my man, Joe Leapor. He's out your way, up there on the Black Mesa. And if he gives you any guff about being on a leave, then you write him up on an absentee report and mess with his health benefits. Lieutenant Lee Porn's with his wife right now. She's just had... You're real sensitive, G. I realize that. A genuine medicine man in the making. 
Trouble is, you're not paid to do your woo-woo. Now, I want you to go out there and look around, talk to the witness, ask some questions. Find the backhoe. Listen, you've done enough for Mrs. Two Horse. They don't need you up there. Come on, Joe. We settled this. I'm better. But it's cold and windy up there. Now come on home. I gotta go. They'll drive me home. No, no, no. Catch a cold. Up there. Oh, would you stop being such an old woman? What did you say? <sighs> Quit using me as an excuse for moping around. That's what you call it. When I leave my job and stay home to take care of you. Go on, Joe. Go back and do what you're good at. Hey, Joe! How did they find me here? I'll be fine. Go. What? Joe, buddy. I'm on leave. Well, Captain Largo told us he'd be able to help us out because you've been inactive lately. Inactive? He said you're on unsked leave. He said you need to remedy that if you want to keep your health benefits. He threatened my health benefits. It's pretty much what he said, yeah. Did he tell you how sick my wife has been? And how much I've been taking care of her? He needs you to serve a warrant up in Chaco. An anthropologist is accused of stealing pots and selling them on the black market. You want me to serve a warrant on a pot picker in Chaco? Come on, Joe. National treasure, Anasazi, big priority. You know those roads through the back country like nobody, Joe. What roads? It's 120 miles of potholes. What'd you say the name of this numero uno suspect is? Dr. Eleanor Friedman Bernal. Sounds like a weather system. <laughs> you could have called me. You know I was just at the 7-Eleven. You know, I figured you'd see somebody pulling a big tractor trailer into the yard. It was the same tribal property that got stolen out from under your nose last week. Look, you told Captain Largo. Fifteen minutes later, the same tractor, the same trailer came out of the yard. But this time, it had a yellow backhoe loaded onto it. Well, it would have been hard not to see something that big. But you didn't report it because you thought it was official business? <laughs> Look, I got called away at the same time. There had to be some kind of conspiracy. Ooh. Shut up, Delbert. Help me out here. So you didn't recognize anybody? Bad light. You know, come to think of it, one of the guys was Dene. Short, skinny Navajo, wore a bandana. This white guy was following him in a uh, El Camino. Let's see, about 79, 80 maybe. Bright yellow. I'd recognize it. I thought you said the light was too bad for anybody to see. White skin shines in the dark. <laughs> we call for legal advice, I guess. I'll talk to you in a minute. Hey, Janet. Hi, you. How you doing? See this pretty cool car? I was hoping we could take it for a drive and you could check it out for me before I buy it. Maybe now? I, I got to finish up here. You should have called me at the station earlier. And you should have applied for the Washington transfer like we talked about. I intended to. What, in Indian time? <laughs> Let me stay. I can't. I got a meeting in Flagstaff tonight. Look. I'll be coming back through here Wednesday. OK. About the car. I've fallen in love with it, but I can't afford to make a mistake, so I really need your help. OK, I'll do it. The keys are in it. If you get the forms for the Washington job by Wednesday, 
I can help you with them. Janet, I won't kill you to get the forms. That sure is a lot of horsepower for a country ending. So where were we? Did you tell me where this uh, blonde-haired white guy in this El Camino went? <laughs> Over there! Somewhere. How many of you have studied ancient Egypt or seen the Raiders of the Lost Ark? Well, Right here in the United States, we have our own important ancient ruins, too. Can you just imagine how excited the cowboy was when he rode into Canyon de Chez and discovered these beautiful, shining dwellings cut right into the rock? A lost civilization of people, much more advanced than any of the native tribes that came in to replace them. Excuse me? Wouldn't that depend on what you call advanced? <laughs> well, good point, sir. I did not, of course, mean to make a value judgment. So, can anyone tell me what happened to the Anasazi people? That's right. No one can tell me because no one knows. The Anasazi disappeared off the face of the earth. To this day, all we have left are these ancient ruins. And scholars from all over the world are fighting to be the ones to answer the question, where did the Anasazi go and why? Now, you go with your leaders and don't get off the path. And don't disturb any shards or stones you see on the ground. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. May I help you, sir? Lieutenant Joe Lee Porn, Navajo Tribal Police. Where do I find Dr. Eleanor Friedman Bernal? I'm not responsible for giving the scientists messages. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen Dr. Ellie since the weekend. Don't tell me she's been digging pots illegally. Would that surprise you? Nothing about these archaeologists surprises me. Come on. I'll help you. Slow response to gas pedal, chokes on acceleration, steers to the right when braking.
<laughs> Larry. So good to see you. Anybody knows where Dr. Ellie went, Dr. Maxie Davis will. In my opinion, she's the brainiest in the group. Even though rumor has it she's got the smallest grin of the three. So who's the third? Randolph Elliott. He's a bone person. I think he has a crush on Maxie. And these three, they work as a team? <laughs> Hardly. You don't know much about the scholars, do you? Do yourself a favor. Be more tactful with her than you were with me. And this guy over here, who is he, the Indian? Oh, uh, Pete something. Last name's got city in it. Hey, Maxie! Sorry to bother you. You better have a call in for me, Mildred. So who's this? Uh, Lieutenant Leaphorn, Navajo Tribal Police. I'm here to serve a warrant. Do you know the whereabouts of Dr. Eleanor Friedman Bernal? Why? Something happened to her? Oh, he thinks she dug up pots without a permit. Ellie, a pot hunter. No way. Have I seen her since she went off for the weekend? No. Accusing our colleague of pot thievery is serious. I assume that you have evidence. So, where do the scientists live? Oh, they stay down in the bungalows below the visitor center. Yo, Pete! I'm going back to the compound. Bring the truck. Yeah. I'll climb over. Your legs are too long to sit in the middle. <laughs> Maxie, honey, watch the gear shift. Randy's place in here. Ellie! Ugh. Sorry, guys. Catch you outside. Ugh, what is this horrible slop? I wish people would just eat in the visitor center. Insects get all over in here. Yuck. Look, you still haven't told me what you think Allie did. I can promise you, if it's anything, she probably just let some paperwork slip. You have no idea how I can find her? She'll turn up. Tomorrow or the next day. We're always going off. That Navajo at your site. What does he do for you? What does he do for me? He helps me dig. Does he follow the Jesus way? I don't care about people's religion. What does Pete Etsy have to do with this? A regular Navajo would be afraid to dig at a burial site. It's in deep. Ghosts? Come on. So many of the young men have gone back to the old ways. I figured this guy was different. Probably hooked up with Slick Nakai's revival. Have you heard of Slick Nakai? He's a man who deals in Jesus and antiquities. Can't remember the name. Yeah. Slick Nakai is a common name. Huh. Looks like Randy's off to work. Mm -hmm. 
Are these all the work orders from this month? <laughs> well, at least you didn't break the axle. We fix it by Wednesday. This Wednesday? No way. Yellow El Camino. Bobby Nails from the Blanco oil fields. $200 paid out to you. Yep, that's him, Bobby Nails. And it says that you left the car at Slick Nakai's tent? That's where he told me he'd pick it up. I don't know, Jim. Wednesday's awful soon. That's a lot of watch to give up for a woman who'll never stick around. By Wednesday, or you give it back. And didn't give her. See you, Larry. Get it, Eunice! out on the rocks and nobody nobody mentions the name of the dead and all that's left of them is the tending waiting to make you sick when's the last time you saw her when's the last time you saw her when's the last time you saw dr eleanor friedman bernard what's everybody hassling me for because I'm Christian? Who else is hands on you? I don't damn for sure know. But this is a religious service, okay? I just want to know where the doctor's gone. Now, I'm not after you. The Reverend Etsidy, he's half Apache, but that's okay. Because God made the Apache, God made the white man, God made the black man. You can tell him like it is, Rip. Damn it, I'm living in Jesus. Jesus, there's not believing ghosts. You should be up in Jesus. So did you. Wife sickness bring you to Jesus, Joe Leap one? Nope. Hmm. Guess if you're not here to talk about Jesus, you're, you're welcome anyway. You know a white woman called Dr. Eleanor Friedman Bernal? Not sure. Tried to make a Christian out of her, too. <laughs> she, uh, she gave you my name? Well, you're a pot dealer, Slick. I am offended and affronted. I am a clean and sober Christian. I met a dealer in pottery. <laughs> Well, whatever the Lord provides, that's what I trade in. I know it's illegal to dig on Indian land without a permit. I don't do none of that. Besides, I ain't got the stuff Dr. Ellie's looking for. I wish I did, though. Goes for a lot of money. What's she looking for? Anasazi. When's the last time you saw her? Last month. It was nothing illegal. That pot came off private property from a fuller's ranch up in San Juan country. You know, I don't want to have to take you down to the station, Slick. Interrupt your fine service. Listen, that pot came off a of white land. That's legal land. Now, she didn't believe me either. Said they had to come off the res because of the, the design on it. What was so special about the design? It's a flute player design. A bunch of little cocopellis all in a row. I'd never seen that before. It's very artistic. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to my flock. We'll give them hell. Bad guitar in there. 
Be that city. Wouldn't trust him out with my grandmother. So what brings you out here to the skunk tent, Jim? Looking for your back old bandit? You heard about that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Box and telegraph. Margo chew your butt out? Sure did. You know, I wrecked a loner car chasing those guys, too. Good looking, big deal, tribal attorney Janet Pete, snazzy convertible. Man, it's reservation gossip. <laughs> Entertainment tonight. So, um, what's your backhoe bandit got to do with Slick Nakai? Well, Delbert says that he delivered a car out here for some white guy. So I figure that's gotta be the guy who stole the backhoe. Did Detective Largo send you out here chasing your stolen pot? Yeah. Yeah, I bet the guys are getting a big laugh out of that, huh? Lee Porn tries to take a leave and gets dragged back with his tail between his legs. Chase a pot picker. Is that what they're saying, huh? Well, don't worry about it. Look, you're Joe Leaphorn. The legendary Joe Leaphorn. You know you're roadkill whenever they start calling you legendary. <laughs> so there's no white man out here now. Suppose you're gonna go back out and check where those banditos ditched you, huh? I'm not necessarily going out there now. By morning, these Jesus weasels will have warned them. Scared of Chindi? Nah. I know that you're into believing in the old ways, but if you're going to stay a cop, you're going to have to get over the death deal. The car had a little problem. I had a little problem while I was testing your car. While I was out testing your car, I had an emergency. Look, I really screwed up your car and I don't know if Delbert can fix it. Hey.
Yeah, Tay. Good morning. Lieutenant Joe Leepoint, Navajo Tribal Police. Hey, I'm Randolph Elliott. Um, third scientific wheel around here. Have you heard anything from Dr. Friedman Bernal? No. And, I mean, frankly, I'm, I'm getting a little nervous about it. Oh, Randy, don't be such a chauvinist pig. I laid out survive you in the desert any week of the year. He flew helicopters in the Gulf War. Thinks the rest of us are just desert dudes. <laughs> this woman needs me. If she only knew it. I need to get into Dr. Friedman Bernal's apartment again. Unfortunately, we don't have each other's keys. But hello. We can get in through the patio door. Come on, boys. Jim Tree. Is Joe here? Uh, who knows with Joe anymore. He came in after I went to sleep. When I got up, he had gone to charcoal. What's the matter? You look terrible. I found dead bodies, I bet, in the wash. Oh, Jim. Come on in. Come in. Here, drink some of this. Who's dead? A Navajo and a white guy. My backhoe robbers. I found them in their vehicles. They were digging pots, and I panicked. When I saw them, I panicked. And I saw a young girl from way, way back, and... It's like I could feel them. Jindy. Sick. Listen, Jim. I think it's because you're on the right path that you saw the Chindi. It's a big tower. And it's scary as hell, too. You'll need to sweat that poison out. What are you gonna tell Joe? That Jim Chi found his pot robbers. Only they were murdered. So Joe better get cracking before the feds take his case away from him. Thank you. She doesn't usually break into houses. So what are you looking for that you weren't looking for yesterday? A clue. Sarcasm's the weapon of the week, you know. I wasn't sarcastic. A smile is the weapon of the strong. Maxie, maybe we should go outside and let him do his work? Oh, shut up, Randy. So did Dr. Ellie have a purse or a notebook? Tell us why you want to know. To figure out where she went. OK. This is a relatively new purse. I don't see the old ratty one. It's empty. So where does she have permission to dig? We don't have each other's coordinates that way. Ranger Luna must know. Nope. We keep it very private. Some pretty serious competition going on. Yeah, I know what you mean, but I don't see it in that light. I mean, Ellie and I had some truly fascinating conversations about her pots, and, you know, I think she had some really intriguing theories. I do. Do you need a little help there? How would you rate Dr. Ellie in her field? She'd be lucky to get tenure. That's harsh. So maybe she was trying to make up for it by dealing in pots on the side. Um, I don't believe that. 
You Navajo people believe everyone's responsible for everyone else's business. In your conversations about pottery, did she mention any special kind? Yeah, she, uh, she had a theory about a particular woman who, uh... Sorry. Excuse me, I have to take a call in my car. Y'all come back? Plan to. be sweated out of you by now. Over here! We're gonna go back to where you found Ed City and the white guy. I think more than likely we're gripping horns on the same steer. Look, I'm busy. You're a cop for Christ's sake. I told her you'd say that. You know, the FBI and the ambulance people probably beat the crap out of that side already. If you don't slow down, you're going to wreck another vehicle in these potholes. Slow down! Sorry. You're afraid of bodies, huh? Whoa! Slow down! Sorry. I think you broke my ass. What? Ghost? Chindi? This is a burial place. Sacred place for the dead. Okay. Help me map out this crime scene. First question for you, Mr. University of New Mexico. Recognize this? It's late. A valuable period, St. John's. Think the murderer knows anthropology? Or maybe my lady has some big New York dealer who'd pay her enough to come out here in the middle of the night in the middle of all of these ghosts. You're the one with a hoo-hoo. What do you feel about this crime scene? Maybe your pot lady was using these guys, so they turned on her. And there must have been money involved, so she killed them. Dr. Ellie bought at least one special pot from the preacher Slick Nakai. Now, he sounded like he was lying his butt off, but he did admit that. There's a nice tangle of strings here, and we have them knocked. Just when you think you're ready to give up police work, you remember what it was about it that you liked in the first place. We've got a plastic bag missing. The box says contents 30. There's 27 of them folded in. I saw two filled with pots that the county guys were taking away. Where'd the missing one go? The case of the missing plastic bag. Watch where you step. Let's go back to our cabin and look around.
Ranger Luna. The light went out here. That's what you're doing in here? The light went out? This could be a crime scene. Right. Hey, I was looking for something. Besides, I'm in charge of this place, remember? I'm curious what you were looking for. Pine nuts. Ellie collects pine nuts for my pesto sauce. You never heard of pesto sauce? If you're lucky, I'll make some for you. And I even put a few extra pine nuts right on top. There you go. And for you. Thank you. For me. <gasps> hello. Oh, well, hello. So I take it you haven't found Ellie yet. Mildred, where's the corkscrew? Oh. I saw your car parked up front, so I brought over a bottle of Randall's fine wine. I thought we could use a party. Noodles pesto. We're gonna need a lot of wine for this stuff. Thanks. Come on, boys, let's go outside. Come on. I wanna smoke a cigar and look at the moon. But I'm all set up in here. Oh, you are a bad influence. <laughs> That's that Jesus Namaho was murdered. And you're sitting here wondering how to ask me how Ellie did it. Where were you when you heard the news? Oh. So maybe I'm a suspect. It was on the net at lunch. Big bulletin from the San Juan Sheriff's Department. Hey, hey. Hi, ho. We're drinking your best wine. Well, then I guess I can join you. I guess so. <laughs> so, um, is there any news? We have to find Dr. Friedman Bernal. It's in her best interest. If we're going to track the doctor down, we need to know everything that you know about her. Take it seriously. Women's studies are her focus. Right. But we also know that she was interested in a special period of pots. Done by a woman. God, if there's anything more boring than women's studies. Walk me home. Wine, altitude, and uh, stress. You don't have a flashlight? I met him. He's got a flashlight, I can just tell. Be careful. I didn't want to say this in front of them. But Ellie's been working on this theory that she's going to be able to break it to the world that a potter, supposedly some 14th century Anasazi woman potter, can be identified by her style of little Coca-Pelli figures. So Dr. Ellie is trying to trace the potter woman but thinks this will prove when and where the Anasazi migrated. Yeah. She trusts you enough to tell you that. Well, I pretty much know everything that goes on. So, is she going to make science history? No. I mean, her theory's cute, but basically it's half-assed. Look, maybe she did sell a couple of pots to buy enough food to pay for her research. But do you really think that a woman is physically capable of murdering those guys? Well, you women look pretty strong. I'll sculpt you sometime. Quit 
fooling around. I don't like it. You like it? <laughs> Nelson Santa Fe Auction of American Indian Art. And what are you doing with this? Well, around here we run out of things to read. And she lent it to me. <laughs> Cigar star and in my ass. You so do not fool me. I'm not trying to. <laughs> that Davis lady was coming on to you real good. Means she's got something to hide. You figure a man ever gets to where he wants just one woman? Stop. What? In the size of St. John's polychrome bowl, she wrote S.N. Slick Nikai. First light, I'm on the road to Santa Fe to check out Nelson's. And you hunt down Slick Nikai again, and this time get him to talk. Now here we are for the assembly of our favorite dessert. What I've done here, I've already put some butter to cook into the pan. Hey. Heat, so the melts hey, yourself. Find your pot hunter? We're watching that hokey cooking show again. It relaxes me. You know, I think you got something going for that guy. You'd tell me if I had anything to worry about, right? <laughs> I've been carrying this around for a month. Oh, Joe. <sighs> What's special about tonight? I got a lead in my case. You know, by the time I finish my treatments, all my hair's gonna fall out. I'm gonna be a cue ball. What do you want with a cue ball? Hmm? I always liked pool. <laughs> I had plenty of guys from the pool. I picked you because you were interesting. for your eyes. Hmm. You're kind of sexy for a mean old man, Julie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the hearing. Not tonight, huh? <clears throat> okay, then. <sighs> well, we might as well leave. You know what I hate? Not when you can't go through with it. I mean, I know that's probably my fault as much as yours. At least I'm willing to fight. I'm not expecting you to cure me, Joe. I can cure myself. I just want you to stay close. 
Are you listening to me? How hard is it to make this stuff? Okay, Joe, okay. I give up. We'll change the subject. Sour Broughton. How hard is it to make? Pretty hard. Took me all afternoon, so we eat it. This suspect of mine, she left a pot of it on her stove. You wouldn't make this dish if you were planning on murdering someone and taking off. No, I wouldn't. Sour Broughton. What about it? You always do it. I never made it before in my life. Something stares me in the face, drives me crazy, I can't figure it out, and you make me see it. My suspect is out there somewhere all alone, waiting for somebody to find her. Where are you going? Santa Fe. Well, you told me to do what I do best. I did, didn't I? Seriously, tell that little Ivy League aide the offer is totally unacceptable. Get back to me. Hey. It's one thing to wreck a car that I hadn't even bought yet, but you didn't even call and warn me. You just let me walk into Delbert's lot with egg all over my face. Hey, look, I'm sorry, all right? It's Leaphorn's got me running all over the place. Stop. I would appreciate you not bringing up Lee Porn right now. Okay, but just tell me, what do you have against him? He's a fine man. Then what? Then if you follow around after Lee Porn like you do, you'll end up like Lee Porn. Yeah, I thought you said Joe is a fine man. A nice semi-retired loser who's never going anywhere. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Oh, don't worry about it. You're mad because I wrecked your car. No doubt. Well, let me make it up to you. Did you fill out the Washington transfer forms? Come on, Janet. You know I don't have enough time. Get me Wesley at the BIA in D.C. You know I can't do anything until I talk to the chief. I didn't think so. You gotta go, right? Yeah. Look, I'll call you after. We need to keep this display clear. Joe Lee Porn, Navajo Tribal Police. I'm sorry, we're in the middle of an opening. We're investigating two homicides. Could you keep your voice down? An article you sold seems to be important. There's a system for dealing with problems like this. A woman's life may be at stake. The woman who drew the red circle around this pot is missing, and we think she may have gone to the site where the pot was found. I know you gave the documentation for the pot to the buyer. We operate like a Swiss bank here. Our first duty is to our... This could be life or death. Lieutenant Leaphorn. Come in, Mr. Leaphorn. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. DeMont. The lady down at Nelson's tells me you're hunting for a missing woman, and murder may be involved. Two pot hunters were killed. That would be Etsity the Indian and Nails the White Man. How were they killed? Execution style? With a bullet through the head? We do need to see the documentation to know where he found the pot. Yes, yes, but I'm interested in the murders. There's so much death associated with antiquities. I need more details. Are you bargaining with me, sir? No, no, no. Don't get fussy. I just want more details. 
Was there lots of blood? What about autopsies? I believe they're being done today. Could you get me photographs? Probably. That would be a nice addition to my collection. I'll see what I can do. Now, I would appreciate your showing documentation, Mr. Dumont. Hmm. Place of recovery was 10 miles down the San Juan River from Sand Island, a canyon on the north side of the river. The land belongs to a Mormon rancher, a Mr. Harrison Hout. I do believe I have your attention, Lieutenant. Thank you for your help, Mr. Dumont. Watch yourself. He's a stone killer. Come back. It's over. He didn't mean it. Just a wild animal. I think this is Brigham's hat. I found it by the river. He's probably dead. Oh. He went to Jesus. The river. Couldn't swim. You didn't shoot him. Thank you.
Jolie born. You ought to changed. Look at me. Mr. Houck. Always welcome here, Jolie born. Let's go up to the house. Irene, this here fella's Joe Leaporn. Remember me telling you. Irene Musket. See you Yeah, it is, you must. Yeah, it is. When was uh, Dr. Ellie Friedman Bernal out here last? Be two weeks Friday. After Alice passed. Irene uh, stayed on to be with me. Mm. Yeah. Ellie came here to uh, ask me about a pot. Some uh, fancy pot place in Santa Fe had a picture of one in their catalog, said they got it from me. And I told her I got it from a Navajo name of Pete. A city. Anyway, I don't, um, I don't deal in anything illegal on the res. Only what they bring me from the white land. Uh-huh. I appreciate you telling me that, sir. <laughs> of course, if it had been uh, feds instead of you, I would have been blowing smoke up their keisters. Dumbest posts, most of them. You're a brave man, Jolie Porn. You were good to my boy. You didn't hunt him down. You let him find Jesus in his own way. Well, this new business, all the dots lead here. Huh? I'm just looking for Dr. Ellie, sir. Hmm. You have nothing to worry about. You don't think so. <laughs> it's time. He's the one that brought me Brigham's hat. was going back to that health place, huh? My poor old man. His whole beautiful ranch has gone to seed. This man used to be in the legislature. Now he sleeps with his housekeeper, deals in pots. Any word on your pot thief? And the longer I don't find her, the worse the chances are I'll find her alive. I shouldn't be on this case. It's too important. I'm taking too long. Someone else could get killed. Joe. You still love me, Emma? Joe. I couldn't live without you.
left earlier today, beloved former Utah State Senator Harrison Haug was found shot to death in his barn. The senator suffered two gunshot wounds to the head and was pronounced dead at the scene. The senator was 68 years old. There are no suspects in the killing, the third unsolved murder in the Four Corners area in as many days. We will continue to bring you updates as this story develops. It happened right in there. It's okay, Ari. I'm not scared of Jindy. So tell me who was after him. You know him better than anybody, Irene. Help me out. Did he say anything at all about this missing Dr. Ellie? When was this last used? Four days ago. By Harrison? His arthritis didn't bother him? His arthritis hurt him all the time. Didn't keep him from the boat. Where did he go, do you know? It's down the river. You know how far? Not far. I go pick him and the boat back up at Medicine Hat. He did this a lot? Every full moon. Sometimes he'd watch at 10 o'clock news, and then we'd go to the river, make sure nobody was around, and I'd help him put in. Was he on track of something in the mountains above the river? Irene, you got to work with me here. What's a man like Harrison Houck doing messing around with guys like Et City and Nails? He hid this. I found it before the police came. She was up there until his early point. You don't have time to finish the sentence, I guess. He could have paid a fine for those pots. He didn't have to die for them. I put some food in here with your gear. Call my wife. Tell her not to worry. Call Mildred Luna at the visitor center and tell her that I think I know where Dr. Ellie is. And I'll let him know as soon as I can. Okay. Tighten up that life jacket. Be careful, Joe. Yeah. Don't you get killed, too. Jimmy Chi! My to God, holy, holy, holy. I find myself adrift on a sea of desolation, and I'm out of gas. Where the hell are you going so bad that I had to chase you for two days? Visit my brother. In Payot country? Uh, a spiritual brother in the Lord. Hallelujah. Get in. You know, Jimmy Chi, you follow Jesus and he'll help you in your pursuit of the devil. Jesus loves us, everyone. We didn't earn it, and he don't care. He's lovers with us everywhere. I, I want to thank you for the ride, Jimmy Chi, but stop. This is good, I'll just get out here. Slick! What the hell's going on? Nothing. What the hell are you running away for? Did you know Harrison Houck is dead? Listen, uh, Jimmy, I, uh, I'm scared shitless. That's why I came to warn Amos. Amos is your brother of Christ? 
Let me use my pot supplier. The Chinese matter to Slick. I told you. Jesus saves. Believe in him and he will triumph. You can trust me a lot better than you can trust who's out there gunning for you. Just tell him where you got the coca Pelli pot. You don't care about no permits. This is about murder. This is a big manhunt now. Another white man's been killed. Harrison Hauk. You hear that? Hauk's dead. They shot him. Okay. Okay. I found the pot. Gave it to Pete. Pete traded it to Slick. Amos, where did you find the flute player pot? From over there, by Navajo Mountain. Well, take me there. You need three days horses. Real good horses. Well, then you find the horses. I never want to hear that song again. Listen, brother, just name your price, okay? We'll pack in, maybe do a little I'm fair. telling you, I came that close to dying. That's because you didn't pray to Jesus. I pray to Jesus. It's the Shingi. He's been here a lot longer than Jesus. Ask him. He's got a charm under that shirt. He knows more about the Chindi than you do. What did you see up there? It's not what I saw. I heard a flute. Me. Please. I don't recall us having a date. Janet, please. Right. Did Delbert bring over your car? This afternoon. Look good? That's good. As a matter of fact, it looked great. It must have cost you a month's salary. What's wrong? I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about everything. All this sand, you kind of look like Lawrence of Arabia without the blue eyes. <laughs> Go away. Don't answer it. Oh. Mrs. Leaporn. Um, is Jim here? It's five in the morning. This really isn't a good time. What's wrong, Emma? Excuse me. Um, I got a message from Harrison's woman, Irene, about Joe. Oh, is you okay? I'll make some coffee. Irene found a message from Hauk. It says Ellie's still up there and tell Joe Leaporn. So Joe took off down the river. By himself? Did he say where on the river? Irene thinks Joe's gonna leave the river and go up in the mountains. It's not a mountain. I got a bad feeling about this, Jim. Okay, go home and wait till you hear from me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. got to do this. Yeah, I know.
Friedman Bruneau, ceramic specialist. Yeah, we got two or three permits. Anything near Navajo Mountain? North side of the reservation up in Utah? I need a site number. Come on, TJ, help me out here. It's supposed to be a canyon water sprinkler site. Some people told me that the Cocopelles are supposed to still be alive up there. And you believe them? Well, I believe that if anybody knows about these special hidden sites, it's you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Water sprinkler site. Number 723, Anasazi. Two other sites right there with it. Dr. Friedman Bernal, does she have a permit to dig up there? One of her colleagues applied for 11 in that area. It got turned down. But Dr. Friedman Bernal, yes indeed, she has all her permits. Your chief gonna pay for a helicopter? Cause there's sure no other good way to get in there. Davis. Navajo Tribal Police, wake up, Miss Davis. Where's your friend? I need Randolph Elliott's helicopter. Where is he? I like your friend Lee Porn. Stay away from him. Or you what? I thought you weren't interested in pots. Do you have a warrant to search my premises? We have a warrant to find Dr. Friedman Bernal and you're obstructing him. Do you have any pots hidden away up here? Police brutality of the wardrobe. So where's Randolph? Not here. What's in here? And what is this?
Mr. Leaphorn. Papa said you would come for me. Where is she, Brigham? No, 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 no. It's okay, son. Is here now. It's okay now. Shh, now everything's okay. It's okay. You're gonna be all right now. Shh, frog, gonna hurt her. No, 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 no. Nobody's gonna hurt anybody now. When did she come here, Brigham? The devil brought her here to see my frogs from up there in the sky. Listen, we're going to carry her out of here. No. She screams. Now listen to me, Brigham. What you and I are going to do is have some fun. We're going to carry the lady down the canyon, then to the river, into a boat, okay? Okay. Okay. It's okay, okay. It's okay. Drop the rock. It's just a helicopter. Helicopter? Yeah. Not gonna hurt you. Bring him. Bring him. Bring him. Hey! I saw you from up there. You need some help? A lot. You found her? Not good. But she's still alive? Barely. She can't talk. She fell from a long ways. Crazier than that, a hermit found her. It's a long story, but we had to build something to carry her out with. All right, yeah, we'll carry her to my chopper. Uh, we can do this. This is not a problem. Is she in there? She sounds alive. I don't see anything down there. These sight maps aren't that detailed, Officer G. Maybe it's past that ridge. We have to get around those rocks to get to the helicopter? Never make it. Set her down for a second. Come on, it's not as bad as it looks. You flew choppers in the war, so you can land anywhere. Leave the lady with me and fly in and get us. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting thought. I'm gonna need your gun. Now, leave her here, and go over there. You did this. Why? Why? So what did you do? Sneak around behind her. So you could piggyback on her permits and dig jaw bones out of her sights. Actually, they're genetic proof of my theory of everything. Proof of the fate of the Anasazi civilization. Proof? Are you really that ignorant? Those bones prove that a much higher civilization than your own was wiped out by a disease when its gene pool got too small. That's what happened to the Anasazi. I win. Now get moving. But she caught you. That's why you pushed her. You know, I don't have a problem shooting you right here. Sure you do. Shoot me and they won't believe I accidentally fell down into the canyon. Have you run out of arguments yet? Now get moving! Shutting me up is different than what you did to Ed City Nails and even Harrison Houck. The cops get real mad over cop murder. Yeah? Well, I'm gonna say I saw a murderous hermit fleeing the scene. Don't worry. Real good at this in the war, too. You're not gonna feel a thing. Just close your eyes.
Get him! Yeah, I got him. With an arrow? Mm. Well, she's still alive, but we gotta hurry. Mm. Give me a hand with this. That's... that's... I don't see anybody. I don't think you do either. So how did you figure Randolph did this? Well, he'd been denied permits. But I found our missing plastic bag full of jawbones. He'd been storing it up in Maxie Davis's bathroom attic. She didn't have a clue. <laughs> and the chopper. How did you get the chopper? Well, I got a charter pilot to charge it to Largo. <laughs> <laughs> About you. I was worried about her. Still am. Slow down. You're driving out of control. Admit it. I'm a good partner. Look out! <coughs> Move it out, I'm driving. Say that you're happy to see me show up. Never mind that. I'll be happy when we get out of here. Did you ever get that snazzy convertible fixed? Sure did. Cost me an arm and a leg, though. <laughs> but it was worth it. So you looking forward to getting home to Emma? Some things you ought to be able to figure out for yourself. 